Education, and I will be the host for this event. Before we start this event, I'm asking to all the participants to mute the microphone. Okay. In this meeting, we will have a lecture from Dr. Jaron Kukuk from Kelo, the School of Human Movement and Sports Windenshame University about digital technology in teaching physical education. And now we would like to welcome Dr. Yusuf Hidayat as the head of the Physical Education, Health and Recreation Study Program to give his welcome speech. Mr. Yusuf, the time is yours. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, a very good afternoon to you all, especially for Jaren. Good, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I do hope that everybody is in good health and safety amid the global pandemic of COVID-19. Uh, the honorable guest lecture from the School of Human Movement, uh, Vindicine University, the Netherlands, uh, Zeran Kuku, PhD. Good afternoon. Good morning, uh, Jaren. Thank you for your coming. Welcome to my university, Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia. Especially welcome to uh, our study program, Physical Education, Health and Recreation. The Honorable Lecture of Sport, Education and Health Faculty, especially the lectures of Physical Education Study Program, and also lovely our student and participant. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to guest lecture on digital technology in teaching physical education. And I think this one of the strategic event to share, to discuss, and also to update the knowledge, especially lectures in the field of physical education. Also, I would like to thank uh, Jaron Kuku PhD for your significant contributions to this event. I do hope the good collaboration between our faculty and with the same university can be prolonged because as we know that uh, we have a good long history of collaborative uh, work and this event is part of that collaborative. I'm sure that we will find uh, that the event is fruitful and beneficial for our future in education, especially in physical education. And finally, please my apologies for any inconvenience, especially as there are limitations of a virtual event like this one. I'm glad to find that the pandemic, in fact, does not impact the spirit of learning among physical education lecture. Uh, thank you very much and have a nice discussion. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm entering the main session of this guest lecture, which will be guided by our moderator, Dr. Bambang Abdul Jabbar. <coughs> First of all, I would like uh, to read the curriculum vitae from Dr. Bambang Abdul Jabbar. <coughs> Dr. Bambang Abdul Jabbar was born in Sumedang on September 9, 1965. He completed his doctoral degree at Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia in 2009. Dr. Jabar is a senior lecturer from Physical Education, Health and Recreation Study Program. 
His field of expertise is in the field of sports pedagogy. He was also involved in the movement pedagogy and physical motor therapy program at the Kello, the School of Human Movement and Sports Winden Swim University, Netherlands in 2019. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Bambang Abdul Jabbar. Dr. Jabbar, the time is yours. Okay, terima kasih. Thank you very much, Gusifa. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our guest lectures. Uh, allow me to manage our guest lecture now. But uh, before we continue to give a time to the our guest lecture, I would like to inform to you the CV of our guest lectures. Uh, the name of our guest lecture now is Kukuk, PSG. Yerun Kukuk was born on the 4th of July, 47 years ago. In 1991 until 1995, he is a student of Carlo. Then, in 1995 until 1999, he studied at Human Movement Science uh, Free University, uh, the Netherlands. At the time, Jeroen also is a teacher at primary and secondary school in Rotterdam. Ten years after, as a PE teacher, yeah. he started as a teacher educator, physical education and health at Kahlo, the School of Human Movement. Ladies and gentlemen, so many uh, experience that he has, but I would like to make a short, and I think he's also as a researcher now in physical education, and uh, he has many articles that published in, in the international area. He's also an editor of uh, Routley a Book Company and he's an editor of digital technology in teaching physical education and i think today uh, we, we we will hear the information from Jeroen about digital technology in teaching physical education Jeroen, it's my pleasure now to uh, keep a time to you to present your uh, content or your idea about digital technology in teaching physical education. Now the time is yours. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I would share my screen, so I will try to manage it. So it should be presented on the screen, uh, hopefully. Is it? Uh, is it? Yes, it's already. All right, good. So, uh, dear colleagues from the university uh, in, in, in Bandung, uh, it's a great pleasure to give this presentation. Um, it's wonderful and very excited to be back virtual at the university because I already visited uh, your university twice. Uh, so uh, unfortunately, it uh, doesn't come to the third for till now, but I'm very happy 
to give a presentation and I would like to thank the committee for the invitation um, and for the very kind uh, way of making this happen. And I think it's also very exciting because we are, it's my first presentation um, doing this with Zoom. So it's quite, quite excited, but um, well, we will try and it's the, it's together, it's about the subject of digital technology. So we will see if all things go well, but that's also the critical thing of using technology in physical education. Uh, also uh, very uh, welcome to all the students who are participating. So um, it's a great honor to, to say and to present uh, our research uh, uh, about digital technology. So um, the, the, the title of my presentation is uh, Digital Technology and Teaching Physical Education. Um, but first of all, I would like to um, acknowledge my research group, Human Movement and Sports. Uh, these are my direct colleagues of the Faculty of Human Movement and Education from Windesheim University, the Kahlo, um, especially Dr. Ivo van Hilvoorde and Dr. John van der Kamp, who are uh, working together very well on topics uh, such as motoric learning, topics like um, digital technology and the use of um, pedagogical approaches in uh, physical education, such as teaching games for understanding. And also my colleague Corina van Dodewaard, Wietse Walinga and Joop, van, uh, Joop Duivenvoorde, who are also um, make a lot of uh, significant contributions to, the, um, uh, to the, the field of uh, our research program. Um, please, uh, before I go further, if uh, things are unclear or things have to be translated, then please be welcome to interrupt uh, because, because it's virtual, it's also important that when people listen that they can follow the, the whole um, uh, presentation. Um, the main part of the book of the presentation will about our book, Digital Technology in Physical Education, Global Perspective. As I already said, Ivo van Hilvoorde and me, we were editor of this book um, published by Routledge. Uh, and the book is not only written by our two, but is, is a, it is a collection of uh, significant chapters of researchers around the world. So that's the title of Global Perspectives. So we invited many um, researchers who are involved in physical education to, to publish about their first um, ideas, their first concepts uh, regarding to digital technology. But this is not the only work, the, the other work there are there are some colleagues from uh, Zagreb who already published uh, a, a book about physical education and new technologies um, four years ago. So a lot a lot of things happening in the development of using digital technology, and I think we can say we have worked with a book to to publish um, uh, work over the world but there are many other people who also try to collect all the significant papers and research regarding technology my this is my outline so my presentation will consist about four parts the first part will be a uh, a slight introduction about digital technology um, and you will see that I will also make a, a point and consideration of a critical stand against the use of digital technology. Um, after that I will explain the four important parts in our book so that will be the second part and the third part will be around okay what's happening from now 
at the, uh, currently. So what kind of work uh, do we uh, and what kind of research we conduct regarding um, the current trends? And one of them is the smart sports exercises by using um, uh, lead floor technology. And uh, the last point will be about the pandemic uh, issue. So I will explain a few things uh, about what's happening in the Netherlands, um, about the influence on PE teachers' work uh, regarding to COVID-19. Um, not to say that it's uh, quite the same as per perhaps in Indonesia, but to give a uh, one perspective of what happening after the COVID-19 was entrance the Netherlands in March, um, uh, six mo uh, eight months ago. So I will give them so, some some insights. Perhaps you can also see. Okay, what's how can I say and how can I. Um, uh, make a connection about what's happening with physical education in Indonesia. Okay, so what we already know, and I know that also is becoming part in Indonesia, is that digital technology is changing our behavior uh, in every aspect of what we are doing uh, from, from ages from uh, two years Till the elderly people, everyone has a mobile phone or a computer, but there are so many things that uh, are integrated with the digital technology. So one man can say, or oh, you, you can be critical about the use of digital technology because um, you can question if it's not uh, if it's not uh, the beneficial for you uh, your movement or your motoric uh, development because if people are sitting uh, on the bench and 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 only sitting on their uh, watching on their mobile phone then okay what's happening uh, for um, uh, health issues for example uh, that's of course a very uh, a good uh, point uh, but that's not the point i would like to make uh, in this presentation of course, it's changing our behavior, but we should also say that digital technology can uh, foster, improve the physical education lessons and the way we teach children uh, physical education skills. So if you look at the left picture, you can see if, if, if there is a child who wants to uh, play football or doing other things, then he has no friends anymore because they are on the mobile phone, for example. But, and that is also a background question, of course. How can we engage children to be active, to be physical active? And in that perspective, it will be important to mention that it is, of course, about physical literacy. And that means if we take um, uh, the founder uh, into account physical literacy means that it is the confidence the motivation and the competence to be physical active from two years from 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 early years till elderly people and physical literacy means also that we are trying to prepare our children, our young children, to become uh, physical active after school. So there is one uh, important period, of course, and that will be the school period for children, because if they don't learn how to uh, move, but also being engaged and having confidence and motivation to move, then it will be difficult at the uh, later uh, years to be physical active. So I would like to make a, cup, uh, a connection between the use of technology and to be physical literate for um, all um, for the future. If, if we are um, uh, looking at the technology part in physical education. And if you want to 
read more about um, our chapter in this book uh, of physical literacy, uh, you can see that we have written about the perspectives of phys physical literacy in Europe. So not only the Netherlands. And we also have made a point about, okay, what can we say about the use of technology influencing the physical literacy of people? And of course, um, if you see that there are many digital applications available for, for the mobile phone, for our tablet PCs, our computers, but not all that digital applications are working on the right way, are beneficial for people. But perhaps if you uh, take a look at your own mobile phone with some apps, if you want to um, record something, videos, or you want to uh, do some fitness, there are many, many, many applications, but you can question if those application helps you to be uh, to to be a, uh, to be a, to get healthy or to get uh, have a more condition, and yeah, that's that's uh, that's a, a question that we also uh, mention in the, this chapter uh, regarding to physical literacy. But of course, if this is a picture of um, physical education. Uh, and some parts uh, of physical education in the Netherlands, um, it does influence and it does change our situation. And I understand that this will not be the same picture as you has in Indonesia. I, I understand. But um, I can imagine that in the future there will be some digital technology available in schools as well in Indonesia. Um, you can see some the picture at the left. Pe uh, children are uh, skiing uh, in the physical education classroom with virtual reality screens um, to, to get involved with the sport of skiing. And the right picture above is about snowboarding uh, in the in the gym. <coughs> the, sorry, and the, the right picture below is about how to golf using the uh, the we connect. Um, and of course, these things will not overtake physical education, but they will influence how we behave in physical education classrooms. And on the left uh, low, below picture, you can see skating and that's a popular uh, sport in the, in the Netherlands when it's coming be called, be called. And we have some ice. Um, and so you can imagine that in Indonesia, there will also be some specific cultural sports that will be important. And some companies will also try to uh, involve in giving the physical education uh, gyms uh, some materials. And perhaps that will be digital application on the mobile phone because I know everybody already has some, some, um, a mobile phone. And this is this slide is to help you to give a, a slight impression about the development of gyms in the Netherlands. So on the, the, the left photo, you can see it's a picture about, about 80 years ago. Um, and, but right uh, in, above, you see a, a picture that is slightly about uh, a regular physical education um, uh, classrooms. And you can question if does it change so much as I say in the last slide. And I think that is very important to say because um, although there are some TV screens in our classrooms, um, it doesn't go so fast that already the classrooms are also changing about digital technology. 
but the use of digital technology is increasing if we say if we looking at the use of ipads uh, mobile phones and computers and i will explain this in the next slides but first of all i would like to say that digital technology is also uh, very common if we look at what is happening on social media and what we use by uh, YouTube. And this is uh, a picture of Julius Jago, and you can find it on YouTube. And he is called Mr. YouTube because uh, he would uh, try to do a, a track and field uh, activity uh, in his country, but he has no coach. So he has to learn that activity by himself. And he decided to uh, watch YouTube videos to learn more about that sport. And because he learned by himself, he self-regulated his uh, process without any coach, without any uh, teachers. He managed that he can participate on the Olympics of 2012. And this example shows that the influence of digital technology as, for example, um, YouTube will uh, give us more opportunities about how we behave and how we be physical active or how we learn physical skills in physical education and Julius Diego says, okay, my, my coach is me and my YouTube videos. I don't need any, uh, I don't need any uh, teacher or trainer coach. So for me, it's a, it's a very important example to show, okay, YouTube does influence our behavior. Looking at um, the, uh, availability of digital apps and I'm sure you have some digital apps on your um, iPhone or your your phone your mobile phone um, and and there and if you ask for okay can I make video analysis or can I record my uh, running or record my cycling or or whatever we can say there will be an app for that because there will always be an app. And that's also the same for physical education teachers. The availability of apps are tremendous high. You can use everything for, for everything in physical education. And my point is to make um, uh, that we say, okay, maybe we should as physical educators measure what we value and not value what we can measure so it's important to see what are the goals of your program and what are the the the, the objectives the learning objectives of your pe program uh, and then you should search for the right digital application but not um, looking at the availability of new apps and say, okay, this is a new app. We can use it in the classroom, but you don't know how to use and why, and it doesn't meet the goals of physical education. Um, so my question to Bambang, perhaps can you say or make a translation about this last slide? Yeah. Because it's quite important. Yeah, thank you very much to stop you before you continue to another slide. Okay, I will try to translate uh, Jerun, uh, maybe for two minutes. And please, if you want to drink, uh, take a rest for a while. Bapak-bapak dan ibu sekalian, uh, saya kira pada siang ini kita diberikan sebuah uh, paparan yang sangat menarik berawal dari tadi Pak uh, Yerun mengatakan ada empat bagian dari uh, presentasinya dia 
Yang pertama yang disoroti adalah uh, kedudukan kritikal atau kedudukan kritis dari penggunaan digital teknologi dalam kaitan dengan baik itu pendidikan jasmani maupun tentang gerak. Nah, isu yang dikemukakan tadi di berawal dari uh, bagaimana digital yang beredar sekarang ini mengubah perilaku manusia. Ya, yang tadinya sering menjadi sedenter untuk uh, sedenter dalam kehidupannya. Nah, kemudian uh, bagaimana juga di dalam digital teknologi tadi uh, terkait dengan physical literasi yaitu memberikan kemampuan kepada seseorang tip dalam kehidupannya atau bisa juga mempersiapkan seorang anak agar dia mau mengaktifkan uh, dirinya uh, setelah dia sekolah uh, yang menarik itu intinya adalah digital menekan gaya kehidupan manusia Nah, oleh karena itu kemudian eh, dikembangkan melalui riset oleh eh, dia, oleh Jerun ini, eh, dengan riset-riset, dengan penelitian-penelitian yang terkait dengan eh, penggunaan digital dalam eh, pengajaran pendidikan jasmani. Nah, ada satu hal yang juga menarik, apakah betul teknologi digital itu mengubah pengajaran pendidikan jasmani? Nah, ini nanti akan dijawab pada bagian selanjutnya. Kemudian juga ternyata digital itu sudah bisa dipakai di dalam kelas pendidikan jasmani. Tadi kita lihat ada yang bermain snowboard, bermain ski di depan layar. Kemudian juga yang terakhir, tadi isu kritis yang berkembang adalah penggunaan digital di YouTube. Nah, kemudian ya, karena eh, layanan-layanan khusus yang atau software-software khusus yang ada di App Store misalnya atau di Play Store itu bisa digunakan. Tetapi sebenarnya yang ditanyakan yang perlu diperhatikan oleh kita eh, penggunaan alat itu harus tahu tujuannya apa sebenarnya tujuan yang ingin kita ketahui dari alat itu. Nah, dikatakan dalam slide ini, uh, ukurlah apa yang kita nilai, bukan apa yang kita nilai menjadi sesuatu yang dapat diukur. Artinya barangkali adalah pengukuran yang, harus, yang kita lakukan harus tahu tujuannya, apa tujuan dari uh, equipment atau alat yang kita gunakan itu. Itu barangkali isu kritikal yang berkembang dalam kaitan dengan uh, digital penggunaan digital teknologi dalam pengajaran atau dalam kegiatan uh, kita sehari-hari. Mudah-mudahan penerjemahan singkat ini bisa memberikan penjelasan kurang lebihnya mungkin mohon dimaafkan ya. Uh, silakan barangkali. Uh, Now I think uh, you can continue, uh, okay. Jerun. Please. Okay. So, um, okay. so look at this critical, well, perspective. Um, we can say, does digital technology offers new possibilities? And I think it does because you can say uh, learning processes in physical education are directly observable if you use video for example and we can say that those video recordings are also immediately accessible so you can use those videos directly in the physical education lesson and we only need uh, one mobile phone or the mobile phones uh, of teachers or tablets but that's the only thing and i think that will be manageable for physical education or at least most schools um, uh, i think but uh, to mention that the use of videos or video recording is not 
uh, or new development. We are already know in the year 70s that the use of uh, cameras or TV screens are already have been done in, for example, swimming. And uh, as you can see here in an old paper of 1973, the use of video is not new. So I think if you use a digital application to analyze movement skills and movement behavior, then it's also something that already has been done in the past. But if we can, we can say that some new possibilities are available because I think if we use the digital technology on the right way, teachers can be influencing themselves, by themselves, by their own choices. Um, and we can also say that um, digital technology is everywhere, so the influence will be there. But there is one point or, yeah, two points perhaps, and that is the implications and the effects of those use of technology are not always clear. So we need more practice-based research to, to find more ideas about how we can integrate the uh, technology into physical education lessons. So now I will be quite quick explaining the four parts of our book. And as you can see, it's divided in four topics. First topic is about the use of concepts and a critical reflection on digital technology. Then the second part will be about skill acquisition, motor learning, and the way we assess motor skills. And the third part will be about curriculum and the influence on physical education curriculum. And from the, and the latest finally will be about how can we as faculties um, use this for professional development. So first of all, I would like to uh, uh, introduce the first concept of the book the, about concepts. And I would like to uh, mention about the role of physical educators, our teachers, how they should uh, use um, their normal pedagogical content knowledge. Because we have the green circle, it's about content. You can say that's your physical education program. And you have your pedagogical content, the didactics, the didactical issues. And both circles are normal needed without any technology. And if you integrate those, both content and pedagogical, you've got the pedagogical content. And that is needed to all, doing all the teachers. So you at the faculty are also just like the Kahlo in the Netherlands, you are working on trying to uh, foster, improve the pedagogical content of uh, in-service students, but also PE teachers working in the field. And this is the uh, introduction of the technological content, what is needed. So I will explain this picture later, but I will show it now to, sh to, see, to show you, okay, we've got the pedagogical part, we've got the content part, what is needed for PE teachers, but now we also have an issue of technological influence. And PE teachers should work on all these three circles. Okay, I will go further, but I will explain this by giving you examples and go back to this uh, important picture. So the technological part is on what Schulman says, it's the knowledge, the capability uh, of using various technologies uh, that are used in teaching and learning settings and knowing how teaching might be as a result of using particular technologies. So 
it's the integration of how you can use the technology together with the pedagogy, the didactics. And this is an example about 20 years ago, we used video cameras in our classroom and we have a computer uh, and, and if we want to record, for example, basketball or for example, badminton, and we want to record the skills of children, then we need a camera, a tripod, and we need a, a separate computer with some complex, com complicated uh, uh, connections, etc. And if we have record the, the skills of children, then we have to make it afterwards by using a, a, a video editing program to select videos, etc., and that's that's quite complicated, quite complex, and we have changed this. Now we are using, well, after a few years, we can work with a digital tagging uh, screen, for example, and we make some recordings, and then we also you need to use the computer to make the selection um to make video editing etc and uh, but now we having tablet pcs or uh, ipads for example and uh, we have the wireless connection with a screen in our uh, gym it makes it more accessible to do the video editings on the digital application so the technology develops during the last couple of 20 years. And this is the current situation that we have some cameras on the, uh, the wall, cameras um, uh, on uh, different places, and we have the tablet PC, um, and we have the screen on the wall. And it's all wireless. So this is the development of technological part but teachers have to uh, work with these uh, technological innovations they need to be used to get uh, all the uh, digital tools together in the gym with the children so now it's important to say that um, uh, teachers oh sorry that the technological content knowledge is also needed um, in this part. So you have the technological part, for example, the use of digital applications, but you also have the content and that will be your program. And if you look to, your, to the availability of a lot of apps, then we can divide it in, for example, uh, would you like to make a technical analysis of for example a badminton clear or would you like to give some explanation on tactics you can use coach board if you want to uh, select and make highlights of good situations then you can say okay uh, i use uh, video tagging or would you like to make digital extraction cards and then will be ibooks for example uh, a good solution so it's important to make a, a integration of what is the content and what is the technology and you have to make that connection between those and it's a decision that physical education teachers has to make so going back to this picture i would say it's important that you have the content knowledge which is already uh, available for our students but also for the teachers uh, because it's the program it's the physical education curriculum then you have the pedagogical knowledge and then you have the technology techno technological knowledge needed and there's a sweet spot in the middle and then all three of knowledge domains are coming together One quite a clear example will be teaching games for understanding, which is a pedagogical approach. 
and you can use a lot of video anal analysis apps to use it for teaching games for understanding purposes. So the content could be, for example, playing baseball or playing badminton. Then you will use the pedagogical approach of teaching games. And then you can decide as teacher, what kind of application should I need? All right. Then the second part will be about skill acquisition. And I will show here uh, the Zimmerman Zell regulation because a lot of apps help children to yeah, regulate. Sorry. Yep. Can sorry. I interrupt? Yep. I think I need to translate uh, a little bit uh, the first part. Yeah. I will back, go back to the. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Bapak-bapak dan ibu sekalian yang saya hormati, uh, tadi kita sudah mendapatkan uh, penjelasan dan sekaligus uh, menyambung dari isu kritikal tadi, kemudian kita diantarkan kepada apakah memang ada kemungkinan penggunaan digital itu diguna, dapat diterapkan di dalam pengajaran pendidikan jasmani. Nah, berawal dari pertanyaan itu, ya, kata dia, ya memang bisa, ya memungkinkan untuk terjadinya eh, kesempatan atau perubahan-perubahan baru. Nah, dia bercerita lagi bahwa kemudian awalnya dari TV screen, yang hanya bagaimana kita melakukan video, ya kemudian eh, dikaitkan juga bahwa eh, dengan adanya penerapan digital teknologi itu bisa merupakan inovasi-inovasi terbarukan dan sekaligus mempengaruhi pengajaran atau pembelajaran yang dilakukan oleh seorang guru pendidikan jasmani. Nah, namun disebutkan bahwa mungkin saja itu efeknya tidak jelas atau implementasinya bisa jadi tidak jelas. Dan oleh karena itu dibutuhkanlah penelitian-penelitian. Apalagi mengusut konsep, itu. ya konsep itu kemudian dikembangkan dalam uh, bentuk empat bahasan, yaitu tentang uh, terutama buku yang pernah diedit sama dia ada empat bagian situ dan yang pertama ini adalah mengenai konsep dan refleksi kritis yang dia lihat dari dua komponen lingkaran pertama adalah pengetahuan terkait dengan didaktik atau pedagogi. Yang kedua, lingkaran kedua adalah kontennya, isi materi, pengetahuan yang terkait dengan isi materi. Nah, perkawinan di antara keduanya itu maka bisa menimbulkan uh, pedagogical content knowledge-nya. Nah, bagaimana posisi di dalam ini uh, teknologinya, yaitu perpaduan uh, di antara jadi tiga lingkaran, ada tiga lingkaran. Uh, pertama tadi ada pedagogical, yang kedua ada konten isi materi, nah yang ketiganya lingkaran ketiganya adalah technological content knowledge-nya. Dicontohkan juga uh, tipek ini berkembang awalnya dari hanya merekam by video, jadi menganalisis by video, kemudian ada mungkin uh, slow motion-nya. Uh, kemudian menggunakan ada media sambung dengan komputer, ya, uh, dan berkembang kemudian dengan uh, teknologi pedagogikalnya uh, dengan menggunakan WiFi, ya, tersambung dengan WiFi yang kekinian dan dilengkapi sekarang ini ada kamera, ada WiFi, ada uh, big screen, ada tablet, semua menjadi perangkat-perangkat yang ada dalam pelaksanaan atau penerapan digital teknologi dalam pendidikan jasmani. Terbarukan juga, ternyata TPEC ini telah dikembangkan juga oleh dia dalam bentuk pengembangan teaching game for understanding dalam berbasis bagaimana melihat game balance analysis atau perimbangan permainan ya perimbangan permainan di dalam konsep penerapan teaching game for understanding. Ya, yeah. that is the 
the summary, I think. You can continue to second part now. Okay. That will okay. Be about, uh, Excuse me. Uh, yeah. You have 20 minutes more for your presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Usipa, thank you. Remind us. So I will go a bit uh, faster regarding okay. the skill acquisition because I already have saw, uh, said a lot of things about the using of apps um and assessment but this these are my colleagues my young cock and sean van der kamp who has also done some important work regarding to skill acquisition especially about self-regulation and i would like to um give an um, uh, invitation to read zimmerman uh, self-regulation uh, uh, schedule or this is our the, the three phases which helps us to understand how children can work with digital apps in the physical education lesson by themselves. So I will explain it to give some examples because digital applications are not only available for video feedback or analyze, uh, video analysis, but also for using digital multimedia instruction cards. And you can see here one example of an instruction card which shows the Dutch situation of uh, uh, um, uh, 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 activity where children learn by themselves to watch the video and how to arrange the situation by themselves uh, and how to collaborate with others and if they have a certain level then they can show new videos with new challenges so this makes it possible that people uh, that children work together in the classroom without the teacher involved but with with a self-regulation and self-regulated instruction and assignment but we can also do this for a digital portfolio or social media or the use of drones or flipping the classroom or serious gaming so there are a lot of other uh, uh, ways of technology that we can integrate for skill acquisition. Yeah. And, and my colleague uh, Wietse Walinga has made a, a learning cycle in the book uh, and that explains which application fits with the motoric skill level of children. So if you look in the middle then you can see the children have first success then it become skilled and have frequent success. And, and if children play a lot of, um, and have a lot of experience, then will, they will have a stable success. And teachers need to adapt the three phases with the use of technology. For example, if children are in phase one, then you should use digital technology that um is aiming with the purpose of managing your skills and if the children is in phase two you can for example uh, use video analysis apps but if uh, a child want to experiment then you need some applications digital application that inspire children to explore more in the activity this is about the second uh, part about skill acquisition. Uh, Bang Bang, I can also explain very shortly the models based practice. Yeah, yeah, please, please. Okay, so the third part will be on how can we develop the curriculum? Um, if you, for example, use a models based practice, teaching games for understanding is a pedagogical approach, but sport education as you may know from Seedentop, is also a, a pedagogical approach. And uh, sport education goals are uh, aiming to children to be competent, literate and enthusiastic in sports. Um, and that are the three goals of sport education. And these are the two colleagues who have written a chapter in our book Oleg Sinelnikov from the United States. Uh, he explained about the use of technology in sport education. 
and Mauro Andre from uh, England. He has written about the use of social media in the use of sport education. So that's a very important uh, um, uh, development because he has written how children can use YouTube or other kind of uh, social media on internet uh, to learn more about the sport, how to arrange the sport, how to make practices in the classroom. And that's quite important for sport education. And yeah. looking at uh, this picture of him, he has divided the TPEG model I already show um, with some uh, different knowledge uh, that in that can be identified if you use social media. So please look at this table and you can see and learn more about the use of social media with the sport education model. It's from Mauro Andre. All right, I think, is it a good point to make a further translation because I go to the fourth part? Bamba. Okay, thank you. Uh, isu kedua, uh, maaf. Uh, pembahasan kedua, Bapak-Bapak dan Ibu sekalian yang saya hormati, uh, mengenai uh, pengembangan uh, ke dalam kurikulumnya. Nah, ternyata di dalam konteks ini uh, bisa diterapkan uh, penggunaan uh, digital teknologi Uh, dengan harapan nanti siswa akan bisa meregulasi diri uh, atas dasar apa yang kita berikan dalam bentuk kartu-kartu uh, belajar atau kartu-kartu pembelajaran. Kartu-kartu pembelajaran itu akan berisikan tugas-tugas uh, yang harus dilakukan sehingga siswa bisa menyiapkan, bisa uh, melihat, kemudian uh, membuat bentuk-bentuk uh, geraknya seperti yang ada di dalam kartu pembelajaran. Nah, dengan demikian diharapkan sebenarnya melalui ini bisa berkembang siswa dalam hal kemampuan meregulasi diri belajarnya. Nah, kemudian yang kedua, yang ketiga, itu berkaitan dengan pengembangan kurikulumnya. Nah, di sini sudah banyak dikembangkan tadi penelitian-penelitian yang dilakukan dari rekan kerjanya with Sewalingha, kemudian dari Amerika tadi dan dan uh, dari Inggris dan uh, ini semua ada di buku yang diedit oleh uh, Jerun dalam bukunya Digital Technology in Teaching Physical Education. Uh, jadi intinya Bapak sekalian bahwa uh, sudah banyak dikembangkan penggunaan teknologi dalam pengajaran baik itu di bidang pendidikan jasmani maupun olahraga. Ya, yeah. please. Uh, then I will go to the, the fourth part of our book. And that will, could also be interesting for you faculty using technology, but also help the physical education teachers already working in the field. Um, I explain shortly two um, developments. First one is to use online platforms to stimulate reflection and professional learning. My colleague Adania, Aspasia Adania has written a chapter how to use um, the reflection on um, the didactical and pedagogical part of learning. So she tried to uh, manage how a platform can work to stimulate reflection on the work we are doing as a teacher. And that's very important because you can use Zoom or you can use Teams, but that's not the same as collecting good reflections and building further on your professional development. So um, this is one of the uh, important uh, developments for the future, how we can use those flat platforms. And colleagues from America have used avatars uh, in teaching didactical skills. So if you need some new didactical skills, you can also um, uh, integrate a virtual classroom 
to practice some didactical skills such as having attention from the from the audience uh, talking to children uh, explaining some instructions uh, without the real situation so you can learn it by yourself in virtual situation and that helps you to get competent in your pedagogical skills and the last part that is my uh, personal together with colleague with uh, professional development and that's the uh, formative assessment uh, digital tagging tool uh, and it could be a nice example of a pedagogy laboratory and you can read it the last point about digital tagging you can read it in this paper we have written for the american uh, journal it's about the integration of the technology the content and the pedagogy um, uh, in tpac and we have aligned digital video technology with game pedagogy and I have demonstrated with my colleague a few years ago this for Bambang, but also I think during a session at your university. And that is the use of video catch, which helps to select videos in the classroom, but also to highlight the tactical situation. And I'm not sure if the video works well, but it's uh, only to, to show the example of, okay, you can make a, a tag button at, at uh, one point and then if you uh, go to the recording you tag those events that are very important for example here tagging a uh, handball situation in our uh, faculty and if you have tagged the situation then you go to the third part and then you can play the video what you have been tagged directly in the lesson and you can show to the students um, to highlight this tactical situation and we can show with using a drawing tool to to help children and help students to come become a better handball player so video catch it's a digital application helps to improve skill acquisition and this is the situation at our uh, faculty. Um, now we help physical education students to be a good ta digital tagger. So we show them a video and we help them to tag the videos and to make a good selection of those videos, uh, but also have a good conversation with children playing basketball. So at the faculty, we help them to make the, the good decisions, which is a de pedagogical decisions, of course. And this could be also a very interesting development to use at the university, because you can also arrange it from uh, an online situation. Yeah. Okay. I, um, yeah. Yeah, this, this will be the, the end of... Um, uh, and I will go to the final part of the of my presentation. Yeah. So, okay. uh, can you turn a bit back? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Bapak Bapak dan Ibu sekalian uh, di bagian keempat ini adalah bagaimana uh, penggunaan dari digital teknologi itu di kembangkan ke dalam konteks uh, continuous professional development jadi pengembangan uh, profesional lebih lanjut ya pengembangan ke profesional lebih lanjut dengan melakukan reflection dan uh, dan juga uh, professional learning ya tadi artinya uh, professional learning itu belajar untuk bersungguh-sungguh sungguh-sungguh uh, di dalam uh, mengembangkan kemampuan belajar Nah, ini tadi dilakukan ada beberapa platform yang terjadi uh, kemudian uh, diintegrasikan ke dalam konten konten dan didaktik dan uh, teknologinya ya jadi itu kemudian uh, menjadi satu kesatuan 
Dan di slide ini adalah slide yang memperlihatkan bagaimana digital teknologi dalam pengajaran pendidikan jasmani itu digunakan. Di slide ini seperti yang disebutkan nomor di nomor pertama itu adalah bagaimana si kamera yang atau software yang ada di dalam gadget itu di merekam ya kejadian yang akan dianalisis tentu dengan beberapa kode yang sudah dibuat terlebih dahulu kemudian ke nomor dua itu mencoba di disentuh touchnya buttonnya untuk nanti ada direkam gitu ya dan kemudian nanti akan di Uh, di, dilihat ulang akan dilihat ulang di slide yang ketiga ini dan nanti ada ada proses yang tersendiri oleh si software itu untuk uh, menyusun gambar-gambarnya uh, nah, kemudian di bagian akhir itu bisa didiskusikan dengan uh, siswa uh, atau dengan pemain dan bisa di Uh, diberikan tanda-tanda apa yang kurang, apa yang lebih, apa yang lemah uh, melalui uh, tulisan atau warna-warna yang sudah ada di situ, warna merah, warna kuning dan seterusnya. Nah di dalam, sorry next uh, slide please. Uh, no, no slide next slide please. Ya, ini yang digunakan di dalam konteks pengajaran pendidikan jasmani. Jadi siswa melakukan videonya sendiri atau pengambilan videonya sendiri melalui software yang sudah ada. Namanya itu softwarenya Video Catch. Dan itu nanti akan bisa didiskusikan dengan siswanya sendiri. Next, I think. Ya. Yeah. Oke. Okay. Then I will come to well. This this was the four four parts of our book, and uh, the next part I will slightly explain some uh, current trends. So that is from a new project we are conducted since the last two years. It's about smart sports exercises, and there's no uh, sound in this video, so don't worry about that. But you can see a. Uh, repeated video about uh, projecting um, on the floor a tech game for children and you can influence the tech uh, game uh, and man manipulate the behavior of children so this is uh, uh, this helps to children and but you can also help children who has problems with uh, tagging or with running away Uh, and this was the first idea of developing a smart floor. And this is an example of a smart floor. It's, a, it's only a concept. It's not integrated yet, but we are developing this. This is a smart exercise floor and it has lead floor technology, but it has also sensing in the floor and it can uh recognize that you walk on the floor so if you have this idea of lead floor technology then you can make some smart sports exercises for volleyball uh, and this is a, a new development that we try to develop okay what can we do uh, by using this if we are in the future have some gyms It's now not available, but uh, sometimes there is a development of using the technology. This will be the future, we think. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, can I go further? Yeah, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah so oh. these, these are a bit of ideas of using volleyball games for children. Um, and if you have this, the. Um, Uh, if you get the slides, then you can uh, read this. Uh, but there are many, many, many ideas about um, how to uh, influence the behavior of children playing volleyball in, um, in the situation. And one of that situation is the effect of field sizes. So this is a normal volleyball floor, 
but if you imagine that it can be a lead floor, then uh, you can imagine that if you are manipulating the field sizes from narrowing or widening the field sizes, you can influence the game. And that will be very interested if a, if a lead floor technology will uh, uh, help to influence the game. Okay, these are some pictures uh, of our research. But another example of the lead floor technology is, as you, as you can see this picture or this video, you can see it's a volleyball game, six against six, but we have a record by the use of the floor, the behavior of each um, player. And each player has a certain uh, degree of uh, defending his uh, space in the field. So you can see, we call that foreign noise uh, and we can help uh, the player to defend his foreign noise. So sometimes the setup player has a small foreign noise or small field to defend, but the two players on the back behind uh, have a, a bigger foreign noise, a bigger uh, field to defend the ball. So the floor can give some feedback to the players while playing this game. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Then I come to the conclusion of my presentation. And after that, I will show two, uh, two slides about the influence of COVID. Uh, but I would like to say all the digital applications that are available in Indonesia, please be aware of that technology cannot replace the important work of our PE teachers and your PE teachers. Um, so teachers are in uh, charge. They are the, the, the people who decide where, which um, uh, kind of applications or techno technology are used. They are the uh, most important decision makers. And again, I would say, look at your learning objectives, look at your program, because you have to measure, if you measure things, what you value and not value what you can measure. That will be very important. Um, some recommendations. Um, knowing how to use technology is not the same as knowing how to teach. So that's actually the same as what I have say, said. If you want to develop technology, please use the TPEG model. And then we can call it a digital pedagogical model. Uh, it could be beneficial if you use a curriculum model like teaching games or game sense or sport education. And please do it by the integration of technology step by step. You start with technology, what um, has a good practice for you, and then involve also other experienced teachers. And uh, being the early adopters, try to ask them to integrate the technology. And check always if that technology is serving and not leading. So if you don't feel um, uh, uh, if, that you are used to the use of technology, then try to do it step by step very slowly. Um, and use different resources. resources. So evidence-informed practice, work together with a soft developer if possible, uh, work with the PEAT faculty, uh, the colleagues together, work with the children, work with the teachers. Yeah. Okay. okay, and yeah. I, I, so this is the summary of my conclusions and I have two slides about the pandemic uh, COVID-19 influence in the Netherlands. So perhaps uh, Bambang, you would share first this. Okay. Okay, uh, Jeroen, thank you. Uh, yeah, Bapak dan Ibu sekalian, uh, di sini, kita sampai pada konklusi pada kesimpulan uh, kalau kita melihat dari slide ini uh, pernahkah kita mengenal 
software-software yang ada di dalam ini, maka sesungguhnya ini adalah uh, sesuatu yang tidak bisa menggantikan pentingnya pekerjaan guru pendidikan jasmani. Jadi jangan uh, barangkali kita mengira bahwa uh, dengan software-software seperti ini, maka fungsi kita sebagai guru sudah tergantikan. Jangan. Justru sebaliknya. Nah, teknologi ini tidak dapat menggantikan uh, pentingnya guru, pekerjaan guru penjas di sekolah. Perlu juga diperhatikan bahwa uh, kita mengukur apa yang kita ya, jadi apa yang kita tuju, ya, bukan e, mengukur atau e, tu, bukan nilai atau tujuan yang dapat mengukur kita. Ya, ini perlu dicampan juga. E, berhati-hatilah kita karena karena sesungguhnya e, kita menggunakan teknologi itu harus tepat dan e, tepat sasaran dan e, tepat guna sasaran. Uh, itu kemudian uh, yang kedua can you show the next next uh, slide please uh, yeah, Jerun I'll show you this one ya yeah. yeah. uh, dan sebagai rekomendasi yang dia sarankan kepada kita semua uh, disarankan oleh dia ketahuilah bahwa penggunaan teknologi itu bagaimanapun juga bukan sesuatu yang harus mengajarkan ya pada kita. Jadi nampaknya kita harus bisa berhati-hati dengan pemanfaatan teknologi. Kemudian disarankan juga ikutilah eh, TPHK atau TPEC, model TPEC ini ya, eh, karena di situ ada pemanfaatan eh, digital teknologi, digital pedagoginya. Eh, yang sudah dikembangkan oleh dia itu koherensi dengan penggunaan pedagogi yang konsisten dengan kurikulum model seperti di dalam sistem game for understanding TGU kemudian bisa juga uh, Gimsen yang di ala Australia atau bahkan di Amerika dengan sistem spot education. Uh, berhati-hatilah. Oi, oi jangan didorong, oi jangan didorong, oi. Oi pakai sepeda. Berhati-hatilah. Sok, oi pakai sepeda sendiri. Uh, Atau enggak, atau pet. Um, gunakan waktu gitu ya untuk pengembangan dengan lebih cermat step by step tahap demi tahap dari praktek-praktek teknologi yang baik libatkan guru-guru yang berpengalaman ya ke tahapan awal dan selalu mengingat bahwa teknologi itu adalah layanan, bukan sesuatu yang harus jadi in. Oke. Okay. Uh, dukung okay. implementasi teknologi dengan berbagai yang ada. Ya. Jadi ini adalah semua uh, yang direkomendasikan dia kepada kita semua dan barangkali menjadi sebuah pelajaran bagi kita uh, betapa kita perlu mengembangkan TPEC ini dan cermat di dalam pemanfaatan teknologi. Baik, uh, I think we are in the off time actually, Yerun. Yeah. Uh, I think, do you think enough? Is it possible to... for your presentation? Because then we have 20. Uh, yeah. Actually, we only have 10 minutes uh, for the Q&A session. Maybe one or two questions. Okay. Lead by uh, Dr. Abdul Jabar. Okay. Uh, I think you have to hold the next question, uh, Yerun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Yerun. Yeah. You you can you cannot continue with the next slide. I think. Okay. I have only two uh, slides. Three. Okay. <laughs> And that will be some information uh-huh. about. Sorry. Any minutes do you need for this? No, few minutes. I think we are in the. You want to present it, or, or we can glen it 
you can it's on yours if you if we have to quit then i'm finished and it's also good no problem okay okay i quit we have to give a uh, uh, the opportunity to the audience to the participant uh, to raise your question uh, to ask right. a question I think. yeah okay thank you very much thank you very much jaron for nice presentation and a great uh, presentation uh, ladies and gentlemen i think it's uh, time for all the participants to ask the question but I, uh, the first maybe i can point out directly hand please alit pak bambang alit alit pak bambang tite pak bambang tite pak bambang oke tite boleh tanya iya yeah, boleh uh, pak alit first and then tite ibu yeah. tite duluan lah guru dulu enggak Ibu Tita duluan, saya yang kedua. <laughs> Oke. <Okay. laughs> thank you, thank you, Mr. Alit. Oke, okay. oke, okay. thank you for the time. How are you, Mr. Jerun? I'm fine, how are you? <laughs> I'm fine. Two years ago, I was coming to Kalo University. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> oke, okay. I will uh, ask about uh, several questions. I think your presentation is it very uh, great, very interest. Uh, but I will ask with bahas ya. Okay. I want to Mr. Bamba help uh, help me to slide okay, from no bahasa to English. Ya. Yeah. Okay, uh, no begini Mr. Jerun, uh, melihat dari uh, tadi presentasi tadi sangat menarik di mana sekarang ini memang eranya digital ya. Tipek kita dituntut untuk Uh, abad milenial ini kita dituntut menggunakan digital teknologi. Uh, tapi kalau dikaitkan dengan tadi kalimat di konklusi tadi yang terakhir bahwa tetap guru penjas itu punya peran yang luar biasa gitu ya. Yang mana jangan kita melulu pada digital tetapi kita punya peran yang masih kita harus eksis. Nah kaitannya dengan sekarang ini kan kita pandemi. Pandemi ini adalah situasi yang sangat tiba-tiba yang sangat tiba-tiba di mana semuanya itu berubah dengan sangat cepat. Sehingga guru dituntut ya. mengajar menggunakan dunia maya ya, lewat dunia maya. Nah yang saya ingin tanyakan, ketika pembelajaran lewat dunia maya, ini bagaimana uh, efek pembelajaran tersebut terhadap pembentukan kognitif, afektif, dan psikomotor siswa? Please, uh, itu barangkali pertanyaannya. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Oke, okay. sangat luar biasa pertanyaannya, uh, Yerun, uh, Mrs. Tita, she know already that the digital technology or TPEG is very important for the teachers, especially PE teachers. But according to you, the last uh, the conclusion that. Uh, Digital technology is only a surfing, then uh, PE teacher is most important. But according to the situation now, pandemic situation, that every PE teacher in our country using online teaching. And online teaching is very limited. Uh, what is your suggestion or what is your opinion if then PE teacher want to develop psychomotoric domain? How could be the digital technology provide uh, psychomotoric, psychomotoric domain? Yeah. So uh, thank you very much for the very nice question. I think it's a very important question uh, now for now in the pandemic uh, situation. And you face, I think, the same as we do in the Netherlands. Um, of course, it's very very sad and bad that we have the problem to engage children to be physically active using social media from a distance. Um, uh, if we uh, look at the Netherlands, then a lot of PE teachers has made a lot of videos, instruction videos for children to be physical active. That's one point, but that's not the same as a physical education classroom. And um, uh, of course, we can um, 
get our children to be physical active with all kind of assignments and all kind of uh, 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 yeah assigning what to do and how to do but it's only uh, aimed for fitness activities like that or uh, some uh, personal skills but not collaboration skills or um, working together and learning from each other um, so the use of social media the use of instruction cards or the use of um, digital video recordings can benefit children from a distance but it is not the same as the physical education classroom and my two slides uh, at the end were aimed to show that teachers in the Netherlands are trying everything to make it possible for children to move and to be physical active but we face the same problem that it's not the same as physical education yeah. and we yeah can you yeah. No. please do it no it's it, 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 perhaps it's a difficult question because we have to face we need our children together in the classroom to learn from each other and to play games with each other and to collaborate and that cannot be replaced by video and distance learning it's impossible for uh, in my opinion okay okay but, but it, uh, yeah seno luar biasa jawabannya ya dan saya yeah. kira but itu sudah paham dengan maksudnya ya yeah. tapi tolong di translate supaya uh, lebih clear pak bambang oke okay. Uh, Kira-kira um, mohon maaf Bapak Ibu uh, sepintas saja karena kita berada di waktu yang terbatas. Jadi dia mengatakan intinya bahwa mengajar di dalam kelas ketika bertemu dengan siswa, guru penjas bertemu dengan siswa tidak sama dengan ketika kita menggunakan media sosial ataupun uh, uh, mengajar melalui online teaching. Siswanya di rumah, kemudian gurunya di satu tempat atau di sekolah. Dan itu tidak bisa dipersamakan dan itu kata dia is very, uh, very impossible ya tidak sama antara uh, guru mengajar langsung dengan kemudian yang bisa disarankan oleh dia adalah menggunakan uh, video uh, instrumen seperti misalnya instruction uh, video ataupun menggunakan kartu-kartu uh, pembelajaran. Kalau bahasa kita barangkali LKPD, lembar kerja peserta didik atau lembar kerja siswa. Nah, itu dimantapkan atau barangkali kita bisa mengembangkannya dalam konteks personal and uh, movement atau kebugaran jasmani siswa itu sendiri. Uh -huh. uh, ya dikatakan juga memang situasinya sangat susah, sangat sulit dan dia menyebutnya ya suatu yang menyedihkan, suatu yang buruk bagi kita. Uh, bagi uh, pertama guru penjas ya karena tidak bisa optimal dalam mengembangkan psikomotor di rumah ini ya. Ya, yeah, oke. Okay. Yeah. Thank you Mr. Jerun and Mr. Bambang for your explain. You're welcome. Yes. Okay, you're welcome. Dr. Bambang? Okay. Yeah. Excuse me, I think uh, the time is up. I'm so sorry. Ah. Okay. Pak Alis. It's already 3.30. Uh, no problem, no problem. Yeah. It's okay. okay. Time. Time. I will sorry, Pak Alis. Okay. Uh, really, I want okay. to... Pak Yusuf, what, what, about, what do you think? Yeah, I will come to the conclusion then, Bu Siva. Okay, um, thank you, Pak Bapak. Bapak, Bapak dan Ibu sekalian, saya bahasa Indonesia conclusion-nya ya. Huh? Uh, uh, Mr. Bambang, yeah, maybe one yes. one more question from Mr. Alit. Oh, yeah. is it okay? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Please, please, uh, Pak Alit, Jerun, we still have one question. Is one question, Jerun? yeah. I would like to to have that. Okay, <laughs> one question, Pak Alit. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank Come you, Mr. Bali. Bambang. Uh, directly, but to no point. Yeah, okay. okay. Thank you, Mr. Bambang. Good afternoon, Mr. Jiren. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ali Rahmat. I have two simple questions. 
In general, Netherlands is different from Indonesia. For example, in teacher and student character, digital technology skill, and digital technology quality. The question are, first, what are the obstacles experienced by physical education teacher and student in applying digital technology in Netherlands? Second, how to solve, how to solve it, solve it. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for the question. I think, okay. um, of course, the situation in Indonesia is different than in our country. I, I agree with you, but um, um, sometimes the use of digital technology can be very easy uh, be, because if the teacher has one mobile phone, he has also the entrance of using technology. The question remains, your question is, how to get uh, be uh, in, the children be involved well, or how to give a good instruction or a good pedagogy. But that is something that uh, the teacher has to learn by himself uh, and has to uh, make uh, some exploration of what works when I use it by a badminton or I use it by a specific game. Try it in a small situation with a small group. And if you have a good experience, then you can build further on that experience. So TPEC says, okay, try to integrate with pedagogy and try to integrate with what you're already doing. So not try to do all new things, but own only small, making small steps. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Jaren. Yeah. You're welcome. Okay. Okay, Musipa, sekarang sudah saatnya. <laughs> But, uh, sebagai konklusinya Bapak dan Ibu sekalian uh, bahwa uh, di dalam pemanfaatan teknologi digital dalam pengajaran pendidikan jasmani itu kelihatannya kita perlu berhati-hati, perlu cermat karena tidak semua digital teknologi akan membantu pada pengajaran. Uh, dia sangat mengharapkan sekali kepada kita semua untuk melakukan hal yang kecil terlebih dahulu, yang step by step, uh, mulai dari uh, pemanfaatan digital yang bisa diterapkan dalam pengajaran. Uh, kuncinya adalah uh, measure what we can value, not value what we can measure. Nah, itu barangkali yang paling utama yang perlu diperhatikan oleh kita semua. Baik, uh, Bapak Bapak sekalian, uh, I would like to say thank you very much, Irun, for such a nice, a great presentation. It's very inspiring for us in doing a next step in the digital technology in our country here in Indonesia. Of course, uh, we still want to continue to still connect with you because then we still want to have uh, a further action. I would like you to get uh, to give some opportunity for us to connect it uh, in in another time. Thank you very much, Terry Makashi. Okay, uh, thank yeah. you, Mr. Yeren. Okay. Big okay. applause, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to the Jerun. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's give big Jerun. applause, Dr. Jerun. Thank you, Dr. Bambang Abdul Jabbar. And now I would like to invite Mr. Yusuf Hidayat uh, to give an uh, electronic certificate to Dr. Jerun for this uh, for today's presentation. So, Mr. Yusuf Hidayat, could you please uh, by virtually? Okay. Could you show the e certificate? It's being prepared. Okay, Mr. Yusuf, please. Sir, uh, yeah. this a certificate, a certificate of appreciation, electronic certificate of appreciation. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, contributions. Thank you very much for your sharing and. We have to we can meet again directly in the next time. Maybe you can come to my uh, university 
or five percent in the next time uh, because uh, we have several things to make collaboration uh, with your university maybe uh, recent collaborations uh, write publications and the most important thing we want to learn how to develop a micro teaching so maybe the next time in the next years 2020 or 2022 we can come to your country thank you very much uh, for your coming for your contribution thank you thank you very much Thank you for the kind words and uh, it's a pleasure to to work further with you and you're always welcome to come to our university as well as it's a pleasure to to help you in your uh, your country with uh, with the next mm -hmm. steps developing pedagogy and physical education thank you very much thank you. That's you're welcome yeah thank you yeah. okay uh, we have come to end of this uh, event in this session, allow me to, ex to express my gratitude to, to Dr. Bambang Abdul Jabbar as the moderator of this event, Dr. Jaron Kukuk as the speaker on this guest lecture event, and to all the lecturers and students who have participated, who have, who has participated in this event. This is the end of our meeting today. Thank you for your attention. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Uh, Jaren, exactly. Please, uh, I need. Uh, <laughs> suck, suck, suck. Yeah, please, please. <laughs> I, I forget. Uh, please, uh, all of the participants to turn on their camera. Oh, yes, we, yes, are, yes. we we all have a photo session together. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. You can see all of the students here. <laughs> okay. Okay, the first slide. Uh, you mean me? Yeah. <laughs> okay, you're, no. you're in the first slide, okay. Oh, the first slide of the presentation? No. No, I mean the first slide of all of the participants since it doesn't fit on one stage. Okay, one, okay, uh, including you, including you. Uh, one, two, three, smile. Okay, next slide. Okay, Thank you. next slide. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next slide. Janisa. Okay, until funny. Okay, yang lain yang bisa senyum. Yang udah mandi, alhamdulillah yang belum ya wajar. Okay, slide ketiga di sini. Okay, kita ini aja. Great shot. Okay, gak apa-apa. Terima kasih semuanya. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sudah boleh keluar, Bu Sipa? Mungkin. Sudah boleh. Sudah boleh. Atau Bapak mau memimpin ini apa? Alhamdulillah. Bersama-sama begitu. Ya, ya. Bapak-bapak dan ibu-ibu sekalian serta para mahasiswa, ini guest lecture nya sudah selesai. Mari kita akhiri semua jadi dan mengucapkan uh, hamdalah bersama-sama. Alhamdulillah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullah wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullah wabarakatuh. Jaren, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Jaren. Thank you very much. See you next time. Yeah. Terima kasih, bapak ibu semuanya. Boleh keluar ya. Dan atas keterbatasan ya, bat, waktu. Mangga silakan. Say my regard to your wife. Uh, yeah, I will. Yeah. <laughs>